been focusing on the Bharat Jodo Yatra, which of course has been grabbing a lot of eyeballs, but not always for the right reason. But the pace which Rahul Gandhi has been maintaining and the fact that he now wants to cover at least 25 kilometers per day, which many of his party colleagues may not be able to keep pace with, actually makes it very clear that Rahul Gandhi is fighting fit. But is his party fighting fit? That's a big question we are going to be asking this week because we are going to be focusing on the Congress presidential polls, which are going to take place finally. I'm Pallavi Ghosh and on one take, the focus this week is of course on the long-awaited presidential polls. As I stand outside the Congress headquarters, you can see those posters of Rahul Gandhi right behind me. The clamour has been growing that Rahul Gandhi must become the president of the party. In fact, when we asked him this question bang in the middle of the Yatra at the press conference, he said that he's made up his mind, his decision has been made, but he's not going to convey his decision now. In all likelihood, he's unlikely to contest for the top post of the Congress party. At least till now, that's his stand. Despite the fact that those who are very, very close to him within the party and also in the family feel that Rahul Gandhi must contest for the top post. We've been talking about the reasons why that should be happening. One of the main reasons is that Sona Gandhi has learned from her example that when a Gandhi does not control the reins of the Congress party, then what happens is the party starts bickering away and fittering away. But worse it is that at a time when the Congress is at its lowest and weakest, can a Gandhi afford to let go of control of the party? Well, that is something which you will come to know. But just very briefly and quickly, how is the process going to take place? First of all, Mr. Madhudan Mystery has been made a chief electoral officer. He's been in touch with all the state units of the Congress party. And more importantly, what happens is that he's been in touch with all those voices within the Congress who are not entirely only of G23, but who have been talking about open electoral roles. That is when voices like a Shashi Tharoor or a Manish Tiwari, Karthi Chidambaram, they make the point that if you want the elections to be truly transparent and for those who want to file the nomination papers, it's already important to also know who the electors are. Well, the stand which has been taken by Mr. Sibisti all along has been that this is an internal meeting of the organization. It is not something which can be made public easily. If anyone wants to know the list of electors, all they have to go is to their respective state offices, find out the list, and then they can file their nomination as and when they want to. But why does this become important? That is because for your nomination paper, for the top post to be accepted, you actually have to be supported by at least 10 PCC delegates. Those PCC delegates are chosen at the district and at the zonal level. The PCC delegates then vote for the AICC and that's when they vote for the top post or that is of the president of the Congress party. And therefore, those who want to file the nomination papers are making the point we really need to know who are going to vote for us because what's the point then? It's going to be sham of an election. But more than that is these voices have often made the point inside the Congress Working Committee meetings or inside G23 meetings and their letters to Mrs. Gandhi that you know you need to have elections but you also need to have elections which look real. The example is often given of the youth Congress elections when Rahul Gandhi first joined active politics and in that we talk about Bihar. Now those elections of youth Congress had to be stopped midway, results were withheld because there was this discrepancy found and there was this allegation that many of those who were voters or who were filing their nominations were actually fraud or they were those who were related to many in the family. So it was all within the family, so they were not genuine elections. That's a lesson which the Congress party perhaps never learned and that's something which the G23 has repeatedly made that you know you need to have elections, yes, but those elections should not be a show. It should not be a sham. They really need to be genuine elections. We've talked about the process, we've talked about the controversy behind it, but let's now focus on the actual elections. Now what's going to happen is that most probably the results will be coming out right bang in the middle of the Yatra when Rahul Gandhi is likely to be there in one of the BJP rule states of say a Maharashtra or Uttar Pradesh or Rajasthan which is also a pole bound state. 
that electoral result will become very, very critical. Now, suppose Rahul Gandhi indeed does not file his nomination, does not become the president of the party. And over here, we really don't want to hazard a guess because in the Congress party, one really never knows who is going to be that person. But several names have been coming up and the most prominent of them have been Ashok Gelod. No clarity on that because if Gelod becomes the president, then the next big question is that who will then become the chief minister of Rajasthan? Will it be Sachin Pilot? Will that decision finally be made? And what are the ramifications it can have on the state polls? So that's going to be one very, very important factor. But more than that, the Congress presidential polls has become very important because we know that now elections are all about personalities. You need to have a face. No longer can the opposition be comfortable in the thought that we are going to decide who's going to be a PM face once the results are out. That worked till the UPA was in power. But ever since the Narendra Modi factor came in, and that charisma that attached to his name is become very clear you really need to have that one face now if the congress comes out with a presidential face in all likelihood that presidential face can also become the pm face of the opposition that is if the congress party actually does well in the state elections that's the gujarat in himachal and karnataka because for now most of the opposition parties are unwilling to accept the fact that the congress has it in them to even lead any kind of an opposition front and why should they really to come back to inner permutations and combinations there is a coterie there is a group of the congress leaders who draw their strength from the position of rahul gandhi who feel that rahul gandhi indeed should become the president of the party because that would silence the critics but more than that the whole bharat joro yatra is made is seen as yet another attempt at an image makeover for rahul gandhi but i would say the counter argument to this is that you look for this image makeover in the beginning of your political career not when you know you've been tried and tested and failed many times around example is a uh, comparison i would say has often been made to jagan mohan reddy where he was often seen as an entitled son of a very successful <clears throat> and charismatic father who also happened to be uh, the andhra pradesh chief minister when he died that's why it's our reddy and therefore jagan mohan reddy had to prove himself through the yatra which he did that sankalp yatra which we spoke about last time round you know it lasted for almost a year and after that certainly no one calls him an entitled son now rahul gandhi is doing the same thing at a time where the tab of a pappu or of a failure has already been attached to him in that sense many who are watching him admit and i would have spoken to many people in the congress party that the bharat joro yatra will actually work for his image because if he's able to sustain it over 150 days and it's going to connect with the people despite the controversies you know that whole thing of being entitled and a runaway politician may do away it may not work so very well for the congress party as far as elections go but what does it do for the congress party overall because that's where the presidential elections and the bharat joro yatra becomes important most importantly and before i end the point is that an election should also decide once and for all who that leader is within the congress party now there are many congresses there are many groups within the congress party can one single person who is a non gandhi actually address the concerns of a divided congress party that's the question i'm asking this week do give in your reactions on the social media timeline Thank you so much for watching.